Hello, and welcome to Dawn's Craft Riot. I'm glad to be back. I had to take last week off due to painting my craft room. I'm super pleased about how my craft room is, has how the painting has turned out. I wanted to share with you folks the color of my room, but I can't. There's a little bit of the blue because I can't find the palette that had all the colors on it, the, all, all two of the colors on it. So, anyhow, you'll see that in future. I did put some pictures up, but uh, color didn't translate so well in the pictures. I can see the chat now. Yes. Hello. I thought it was me. I was worried that it was going to be off the whole rest of the time or something. Anyhow. Yeah, it wasn't coming up at all. I didn't get anything. I saw that you were here, obviously. So for those of you who are watching the video who might not have seen this program before, program, <laughs> if you haven't seen my show before uh, and you're watching the video, I'm doing a live show and there are people in chat who are talking to me and finding out if their chat is working, which it is now. It is okay now. Woohoo! And hopefully following quickly along. <laughs> And not sometimes there's a big gap. You type something and I don't see it for 30 seconds, and then I don't know what we were talking about 30 seconds ago. <laughs> oh. oh, what a dear. <laughs> so, if I say things that aren't to you, video watchers, it's because I'm talking to people in the chat. Um, so, today I want to make I want to do something amazing, but I'm just not up for it. It's been really smoky in our, our area. There is a, uh, there are several forest fires burning in British Columbia and other parts of Canada right now, and it is really socked in with smoke, and I'm feeling strange and sort of discombobulated, but it seems to be sort of a general feeling. Other people I've talked to have felt the same way, and I'm wondering if it isn't because of just this smoke that's been in the air for a while. But anyhow, Because I'm discombobulated, back to my story, there we go, my brain just goes off, <laughs> shuts a switch off and I don't know what I'm doing. Um, because I'm, I'm just not feeling so fabulous, I think we'll just do a simple card today with paper pieces from the um, freshly picked pack that I've been, or stack that I've been using for a while here. If you've, if you've been watching me craft for a while, you know that I get on kicks. I'll, I'll use the same stamp over and over, or I will just be obsessed with a certain paper. And uh, oh, I also want to start from the. <laughs> I apologize, I'm all over the place today. But so I'm using this same pack. But I want to let you know too that my lighting is very strange today. You might notice that, and it is because with this new switch around painted craft room, uh, my lamp my lamp cord no longer reaches the plug-in so the lamp I normally have shining from over here uh, creating a glare over here but making the thing the whole thing a little bit lighter is not on it does seem a bit dull and that's exactly why so I am going to figure out how to solve that problem but I just haven't been able to before today I was lucky to get all this stuff out and I hope I did get all the stuff out I need for making a card but I have opened my window so I've got light shining in from this side but I apologize that the lighting is off today I'll try and get that sorted by next time all right now there's all my excuses all of my excuses hopefully for the whole video done now have a sip of coffee Good. I'm glad that it's still a good picture. I'm going to put my coffee on the desk way over there so that I don't knock it over. The coffee is not allowed on that desk while I'm sitting there, but I'm not sitting at that desk, so it should be fine. And I actually don't, I don't knock over a coffee as often as I knock over a tall glass of water. I'll tell you that. All right. So you know what paper, well, we don't know because we have to look at the papers, but I want to show you this cool thing that I made after watching a few videos. I love watching YouTube videos. You might know that about me as well. And taking people's ideas. I figure if they didn't want us to use their ideas, they wouldn't put the videos up. So there is a really cool stamping tool. There's more than one. Uh, there's the one that's the Fiskars where you press it down. It's like a stamp press, I think they call it. And then there's another one, and I don't know who makes it, but I think it's called the Misty. And it is a stamp placement tool that has a, an open and closing lid. I do not have any of these things. 
uh, but I did see someone make it's it's a, I think styled along the lines of the misty. I mean, definitely not. Please don't. Oh no, your Firefox crashed. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're back. Good. I'm glad you're back. I want us to listen to CDs. No, <laughs> I um I made a stamping like a one of these fold over stamp placement rigs. I don't know what you call it. A tool. Um, what I had, what I found was uh, a CD case that was flat on both the front and the back. This happened to have an insert inside that came out the middle, obviously, and had the disc, two discs, front and back. But because it was done this way, I could remove that middle piece and I had both, I had uh, the solid case on both sides. So what I did was I, I took two pieces of craft foam and I stuck them inside of here. Now I did stick them together with double sided tape, but I left them so that I could pull them out um, in case I want to use a stamp on here. Now what, I, what you do is you put your cling stamp on this side and you stamp it down. Sadly, a CD case is not as big as a card. So I'll have to have a smaller piece of paper in here to stamp on, but you can use any cling stamps in here as far as I'm aware. Um, the clear ones are thinner than the ones that are already on like the rubber ones on, um, the cling mount foam. So that's why I've left this removable because if I use a stamp, a cling stamp here, that's on mounted foam, it'll be too tall to use properly with this foam, with the foam in here. So I also altered the CD case a bit. And like I said, the CD case is not ideal, but I really wanted to try this style of stamping where you stick it onto the one side and you put your paper in and you press it. I think it's a, a great way to do sentiments. And you'll see when I stamp my sentiments, hopefully it'll work with this other stamp set I haven't tried yet, but it's really easy to stamp a good clean image with this. Yes, and, and uh, some people use these cases to store their stamps and like DVD cases. I'm working on making this in a DVD size. I'll show you my the thing I'm working on, but this, this case seems to work much better because it's a harder plastic. The DVD one that I worked on, so I had this, this was the only case I had available to me. You can still see the glue not dried in there. Um, that's a separate piece, but I had to cut out the part that held the, the, um, the DVD. It was molded in. So I cut it out and filled it with a couple of layers of cereal card. And now I've put my foam in here. And then I found out that the front cover of this did not want to pick up cling stamps because the plastic it's made out of has little, has a texture to it, a very fine texture. So I've glued in some uh, it was an old file folder piece of acetate in there, and I'm trying to make this work so that I can do full size cards, but that's, uh, have I been reading Brian's DVD collection? No, this was a Pilates DVD, which I am, uh, maybe ashamed to say that I never even put into the DVD player one time. <laughs> this was, this was my, from my DVD collection, <laughs> you know when you buy a Pilates DVD because it's on sale for a dollar and then you don't ever put it in your DVD player. Yeah, I feel bad. But anyhow, I'm working on making that one work. It, it has not worked to the extent that I've got this one to work, but this one seems to be like, it really stamped out my sentiment beautifully. <laughs> you wouldn't have watched it either, <laughs> but I bought it. Why didn't I watch the thing I bought? Because I'm a lazy, lazy butt. Anyway, okay, <laughs> I digress. So we're making the card. Oh yeah, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about my alterations here. So as you may know, I've got these giant pads of archival ink, which is often what I'd like to stamp my sentiment in if I'm not embossing the sentiment. If I am embossing the sentiment, I use my Versamark ink and that's in a small pad, so it's fine. It works in here fine. It's easy to, to get in, but I found that with both of these edges, I could not get my archival ink in there to, to ink it up. So what I did, and I will say first, safety first, I wore my proper safety goggles. 
if you do this, please wear safety goggles of some sort because I found that I had pieces of plastic flying shards, tiny little broken shards of um, brittle plastic flying everywhere when I took my Tim Holtz scissors and cut this piece off of this side. It worked great, but I didn't put my safety glasses on to start with and my first cut in sent so many shards of plastic everywhere that I knew immediately I had to grab my uh, safety glasses. So please wear your safety glasses if you are going to be uh, cutting brittle plastic and for other reasons obviously. And then I took, you can see it's all, it's rough down here. It's because I took some a sandpaper, actually a nail file and I just knocked down the rough edges and now I can get my archival ink pad in there to ink up my stamp. So it took some alteration. Get someone else to do it or get someone to purchase one of the actual products that's made online that has all the built-in features like it fits a card, it has a grid, it uh, is magnetic to hold your thing down. Uh, unlike this homemade, here's a jewel case, put some foam in it kind of deal. But you know, if I can't get anyone to, to do that for me, <laughs> I have to do it myself. <laughs> so let's try. I do. I want to do some stamping for this particular card. So let's try it. Now, I I want to stamp this cupcake. Oh no, sorry, I forgot. I swapped my idea, and I just I, I forgot. I put those over there because I didn't want to use those ones right now. Sorry. I'm going to use this cupcake. Good grief. So happens when you change your idea last minute. And I want to stamp it on here. And actually it's small enough. I might be able to stamp something else. No, I'm just going to stamp it right in the center of one of these. This is from that freshly picked stack of the die cuts with a U paper. And I don't know if I want to use the orange or pink yet. So let's stamp two of them. And then I can always use the other one to make another card. I'm going to do a birthday card today, I'm pretty sure. So I'm going to use the hot off the press magical birthday stamps. It's too bad Fab is sleeping. Hot off the press 1039. I know he knows these stamps well. Of course now they're blurry. There we go. All right. I cut this out. It's kind of funny that the die cuts with the view comes with a sheet of things to be cut out that isn't die cut. But anyhow, yes, it's so 1970s. Well, they have the lovely greens and things as well. I guess maybe that's also 70s, but <laughs> they do have lovely things. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a removable adhesive. Now, if I had a thinner version of, well, it's pretty thin, but even thinner would be better. Come on, glue dot. I'm going to hold my paper in place with a glue dot. That's my plan anyways. He probably, oh no, I'm sure he has them. Definitely. I just wanted to, you know, say, hey, my brother from another mother, we're using the same things. I'm positive he has them. All right, I'm going to put a little bit of this up in the corner where I'm not stamping because I don't want to affect how my stamp goes. Oh man, I didn't, I just realized that there is a pattern in there. So pretty. Oh, there we go. My chat has moved and I didn't. That's weird. Why wouldn't it scroll down for me? <laughs> so I'm going to put this guy sort of, I think, a little bit towards the outside edge, I think is a better idea for my homemade stamp rig. If it were the, you know, one of the, the store made ones, you wouldn't have to worry about it so much. Oh, and somebody's texting me, of course, good old fashioned Saturday text. So I'm putting my stamp face down where I want it to stamp. And I am going to check the text because people could be showing up. Oh, there we go. No, it's not important. Nobody's showing up. So there we go. I'm closing my rig, I'm pressing on it. I 
think I'm gonna stamp it in black. Actually, you know what? Let's stamp it in brown. Let's see what happens if we stamp it in brown. Black might be a little bit strong for this. So this is a little bit of a pain. I'm gonna move my other things so I don't accidentally get ink on them. Move my scissors. So what I've been doing is grabbing, <laughs> this is a little bit hard to do and hard to show. I've been sort of grabbing the back side of this because I don't want to get ink down on my down on my what is that plastic I don't want to accidentally get ink down there so we'll make sure this is good and inked up I did get some ink on my plastic even though I didn't want to must have something somewhere all right now watch this Close it, touch it down. You don't have to press hard because you've made the foam stick everything up to the right level. I tried it with one foam and that wasn't enough. And then you open it and you have a beautiful, come on, come on, give me some focus on this, my, my wonderful camera. I know you can do it. There we go, super beautiful. Now, if you wanted to do some of those layered stamps, you could just, you know, take a different color and go right back over top of it. Isn't that neat? And I love the impression it gives with the clear stamps because you're not pressing down too hard. Sometimes I find you're giving firm even pressure, but if you've got like a little curly cue at the top or something, you might accidentally press it slightly too hard and you get sort of a fattened line. So this really stops that. And I think let's go ahead and stamp the orange one just in case we want that one. It comes out beautifully clear. Now I'm trying to use the same piece, but I've, I've gum, gummed it up. I'm gonna have to get more repositional, <laughs> more repositional stuff. So I'm gonna take this right off of here because who knows where I'm gonna set the, uh, this orange one. It probably won't be in the exact same spot. So I wanna, I don't wanna touch it with a little bit of brown ink on it accidentally and get a ghost image that I'm not wanting. Oh, come on. It's in this glue where it really likes to stick to the plastic. There we go. I think it's pretty close to the same position, but I'm not sure. Make sure that I get all the ink off of that. As, as I stop talking to line it up. All right. I think this is a great idea. Whoever came up with the idea for the actual tool that does this is a genius. And the people that also uh, made these rigs that I saw are also pretty smart. If you came up with the idea of making your own homemade version of it. Right, and you don't have to press it very hard. And again, a perfect, perfect impression. Like, I mean, I couldn't have done it better if I had, I don't know, done it some other way. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can get this removable glue dot back on its backing. Maybe that'll help. I have a feeling that's not gonna be no, I'm going to have to just take one for the team and throw it away. <laughs> yeah, I am super impressed with this idea. If I get the opportunity ever to purchase the actual uh, rig, the Misty stamping tool, I think I would definitely go for it. I love the idea. Like with theirs, the whole back behind the paper is, um, I believe it's magnetic. So you just put a magnet on to hold your paper. So... And it's also all grid, so you can put your paper in the exact same position every time, unlike what I was doing here. I'm just going to cut the white edges off of these. Okay. 
I know it's a, uh, I've seen a lot of people have started doing their Christmas cards and I felt like I should do a Christmas card, but I really feel summery still. So I thought a summery birthday card would be very good. And I love that the archival ink is waterproof. So now we can color over this with markers if we want to, which I think we'll probably want to. Um, we are going to stamp a sentiment, but I don't know exactly what we're doing with that yet. So I'll just leave that out and wait. So this is the paper I picked for the card, but I think I want this paper to be inside of the card. So this was from a 12 by 12 sheet and I cut this, I cut an inch off of this end. So it is 11. I don't want to think about Christmas either, but I guess if I start doing my cards, I'll have to think about Christmas less later. I don't know. Anyhow, so this is, I cut it down to 11 inches this way and then four and a quarter this way. Although it looks like my trimmer was not straight because I've got a little bit of line showing on the end at the one side, the very top here, and that line's cut off on this side. So we'll have to fold it in half to find out. five and a half and I want to fold it inwards because this will be the inside. I might have to trim it down. Let's see. Let's have this tool. So the side you're folding in would be up on this particular machine. If you have one where there's an indent, it would be opposite because you want to fold towards your mountain. It is good to be prepared. At least that's what being a Boy Scout taught me. Well, not a Boy Scout, a Boy Scout leader. Be prepared. So look, I managed to get brown ink on the back of my card. Maybe I'll have to put a sticker that says made with love by or something. A sticker, I say. A sticker that I made with paper and glue. <laughs> you know, a sticker. <laughs> All right. So yes, I wanted the long card and I think I will, I could, we could turn it this way or we could even turn it this way and cover that. Oh, actually, you know what? Maybe we should do it this way. Let's, let's make this the front so we can cover that with a whole card front. And this is the inside. It still looks good. The flowers don't look like they're going strange. There's a little bit of detail at the top here. Now, yeah, I don't think I can fit that in there. Not quite. Not quite. We could put a smaller card in there. It's, it's so easy to muck up part of the card. And what I did was not pay attention to my fingers. And when you're working with plastic and you get your ink on there, it's just going to stay wet. All right. We have to do the front of the card. This is supposed to be simple, right? Oh, look, a tiny little piece of plastic little remnants, little tiny remnant shards from tiny remnant shards from that CD. Those were flying in the air. That's why I put my safety goggles on. Always wear your safety goggles. She says with authority. I want to do mats. I want to do layers. I want to use the bird cutout. I want to use I think probably the pink one of these. Bird cut out. I don't know. I don't know. It does get everywhere, especially if you're using plastic stuff. Should we do this? I have another scrap of paper. Sorry, it's, this is the part where <laughs> this is one of the hardest parts of this, figuring out what piece of paper you're going to use for the front. I don't think that's going to be big enough, although it might be kind of awesome. Ooh, that's not really going to work. I'd have to mat that. If you drop a Pyrex glass dish, you'll be finding bits from my, oh yeah, 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 for sure. It'll go everywhere. Um, 
in the last house we lived in, my stepson was playing with the, he was playing hockey against the house outside with a hockey ball, which went right through the kitchen window, but it also went right through a storm window. And I was finding little tiny squares of plastic, not exactly squares, but of plastic from the storm window and of the window from the very old window uh, everywhere for quite a while. Oh, I have an idea. I think when we use this, I don't know which one, I think maybe the orange, I don't know. I like the pink one better. I want to round the corners on this just to see what happens. We'll see. Oh, don't open that. I'm going to round it with the half inch. So it's a very deep round, not a circle, but rounded corner. Oh, I think that's cute. Cute. I'm sorry that you dropped a Pyrex dish, by the way. That's, that's never good. Although I think it could be could be worse. I'm gonna go with the. I'm gonna round the corners on this one too, just for fun. But I'm gonna go with the smaller size just to see what it looks like. Um. I think it it's terrible when your glass dish breaks in the oven with your food in it. Well, that looks cute too. Both ways are cute. They're slightly different. But they're cute. Hmm. All right. I think I might want to cut one of these flowers out. <laughs> Just keep on making plans with this card. There's so much nice paper. And also, I'm boiling hot. So it's hard to think when you're boiling hot. So if that was 11, fold it in half, it has to be five and a half. This is four and a quarter. So I think what I want is for this to be four inches by five and a quarter. Let's try that and see if you like the orange one best with the shorter corners. It does, it really does alter the look of them. And I think I agree. I like that aesthetically, although this one might be nice on sort of a roundy card. But I am going to use whichever one is the right color, regardless of regardless of the fact that I went ahead and changed the corners. Let's find this cutter. All right, so I want this side to be four, four inches. Try and get it straight. It's hard to do. Oh, good. It cut off all of that. Good, good. And five and a quarter. Or I definitely want the butterfly, so let's go five and a quarter. Well, that's going to be a fun piece of paper for something. So I got this for the front of the card. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, it looks great. Why wouldn't it? It's made for, it's, it's made to go with this paper. Um, and I want my little birdie. I think I'm going to want that popped up. I think maybe we will go for the orange one. Maybe it's too big. And I think maybe a sentiment across the top, but we have to, we have to, uh, yeah, I think the bright colors are great, but we have to put a mat on here for sure. And also, I want to stamp the words. Oh yeah, I was going to cut out a circle. I think if I cut out one of these circles, it'll be way too big. There's already a bunch of stuff going on on that page. How about this? Let's take our mat from down here. I'm going to stick this guy down and then cut it out the old fashioned way. The, I don't like math way. Oh, maybe we should edge it out, edge it with some ink first. All right. So when I move my room around, I put all of my distress inks into a tub. 
Yes, we got to pop it out exactly with a mat. So I think because that's that bright orange that I'm going to use this ripe persimmon. Oh, and actually, you know what? I'm going to go spice marmalade. Oh, and I knocked the lid off. It's one of the dangers of putting my inks like this. The lids don't want to stay on. They definitely need to find their place back on the table, but right now there is no, there is no spot for them. I'll get it all sorted soon enough. This ink, this orange is a bit more vibrant than what's on this card, but I don't think it's going to be noticed so much. And I think let's also matte, not matte, ink the edges of this, this orange. Yeah, it's almost, if you really looked at it, you go, oh, that edge is orange, but it's almost invisible next to that bright pink. All right. It's so hard to uh, to organize so much crafting stuff. If you've got a lot of crafting stuff, it can be very difficult to organize it all. All right, move that to the side. Let's get this matted. I think that'll hold it down. This is that miracle tape I'm running out. I don't want this to be too big, but I want it to not be too small either. I want it to be in the Goldilocks region. I want it to be just right. I'm move these things back onto my dispersant pile. Pile box. I'm just judging by the edge of the piece not measuring at this point. All right. I think that'll be fine and we'll pop pop the edges. We will round the edges. Guess this thing kind of goes pop. <laughs> And then I should also ink up the edges of this one. I think I'm going to use that bundled sage if I can find it. Because I remember using it the other, the other day. It seemed to work well. I know it's around here somewhere. Where are you at, bundled sage? Oh, there you are. I can't do this one-handed. There we go. <laughs> I think that'll work nicely on the green. Do, do, do. Nice green. And I am going to have to cut that uh, bird out more, obviously. My problem now that I've got my room painted, I can't put anything on the walls for a month, but my main problem is that I stack things up so well on the other shelves, I can't remember what went where and then I'm losing stuff. I've lost all of my acetate, for example, when I was trying to build that stamping rig in the DVD case. I couldn't find I couldn't find my uh, acetate anywhere. Luckily I found an old heavy duty file folder that had started to be cut up already, but I would still be searching for it now if I hadn't have found that. All right, I'm gonna stick this down on the card right now. I'm gonna assume it's it is in here somewhere, but I don't know. Like I don't know. I might have packed it up in a box, thinking you don't use this very often. I can't imagine that, but I know it's possible. So I'll just keep moving things back and arranging things and getting things back in order. I mean, I don't necessarily want them where they were before. It could be lost in the void. I was definitely thinking about the craft goat while I was looking for it. I thought that the craft goat must have gotten it. <laughs> but there's just so many things. And I mean, some are tucked in boxes and some are not. And some used to be tucked in the box that it now has something else because it outgrew that box. And uh, I mean, yes, I do have things with labels on them, but then there are lots of things that got, you know, shoved into something when we moved here. I don't have a label on it anymore. Yeah. 
Come on. Neil, do you get to watch me peel tape? Show. Sorry. <laughs> the peeling of the tape got me lost in thought. The zen of card making. Try and line that up as evenly as I can. And then I have this. Maybe I'll put it right down in the corner. And put the bird up above it. Now he gets lost in that green. All right, let's count the bird and then we'll stamp the sentiment and then we will be out of here. We will be done. Of course, I've lost my little scissors. <laughs> the neighbors are having a an outdoor, what, what do the people in the south call it? Like, uh, and when I say south, I mean south. The people in the south of the United States call it a cookout. Having a barbecue outside and getting noisy. Well, they're having fun. At least they're sad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad I only have really one neighbor next to me. It's very cool. Very cool to only have one set of people <laughs> who, who could possibly annoy you. I'm not saying my neighbors are annoying. I'm just saying that neighbors can be annoying. I think we all know that. <laughs> as long as it doesn't go on all night. Oh yeah, I forgot. It's not early in the day where you're at. It's, it's late at night and they're having a loud barbecue. Well, if it gets too bad. No, I'm not going to tell you what to do. You know what to do. If it gets too bad, run out there naked and say, I want to join, I want to join. And then they'll call the cops and the party will be over. <laughs> I don't know, that's just, that's just my idea. So yeah, I didn't, didn't fussy cut them too much. I left some of that pink. It's going to blend with this. I don't think it'll be too crazy. I think I would like to take a ink to the edge of it though and I'm going to use this worn lipstick marker because it'll be easier to get in there with a marker. Well I figured if I did it it would put them off so maybe if you did it. I mean I don't know what your neighbors are like. If you came over there they might be like woohoo party started. I, d I don't really know but maybe not. For me it would work. <laughs> All right, I just want to take some of that white edge off of the paper there. I don't think anyone's going to be inspecting this card super closely. I think it's not for sale. It'll be given to somebody. But if they do, they'll see that I went through the trouble of inking the edge. <laughs> no, you don't think your neighbors would do that or you wouldn't be interested even if they did. <laughs> All right. Let's color the uh, brain work. Everyone knows what that is. Cupcake. <laughs> Let's color the cupcake. I'm coloring it with some distress markers because they're at hand. And actually, I think. I think I'm going to color it with, I changed my mind. They're at hand, but these are at hand too. I think I'm going to color it with a little bit of colored pencil or pencil crayon as we call it here in Canada. 
It's a good old fashioned Canadian version. Give that some shine. That color I used was pretty, but sort of dull. So let's brighten this sucker up a little bit. A little bit. All right. So let's use pink on here. Try and stay true to the color scheme of the of the piece. This might have worked out better if I stamped it black, but I didn't want that harsh. Like I wanted it to be sort of soft. And orange and brown is very 70s, as we were discussing earlier, so... <laughs> it works perfectly. Where did I get this from? I've got two kinds of two kinds of pencils in here. I've got my Prismacolors and my Laurentians. Oh, come on. Uh oh, Prismacolor. Laurentian. That one really wants to shine. Some I think sometimes black can be too harsh. So all right, the Laurentians come from here and the Prisma colors. I got them in different contain like the same container, but although my I only have one set of Laurentians. Well, I have one set of the other ones as well, but it was a larger set, so I've just put the Laurentians aside here. I think they're a little bit more creamy than the Prisma colors. All right, so what color can I throw on here? I want my cupcake to be, well, it's chocolate already with the frosting. So let's do it in a light pink. How about that? Let's do the cupcake itself in a light pink. Sort of a crosshatch style to fill it in. I hope you can see. I'm sorry, I, I still have not got my camera working to the extent that I can use my webcam controller. Otherwise, I very definitely would be pulling in so that you could see this. That's what I've got so far. And so we just need a little bit of color on the paper. And I guess we'll go for our light green. Maybe the same green we popped up in that uh, cherry stem, but I'll just color it very lightly. Speaking of light green, that's what I painted the one wall in the room while well, Brian painted it. He's a sweetheart. It's a very yellowy green, or you might say a very green yellow, but I would say it's a very yellowy green because I prefer to have green on my wall than yellow. You can see, okay, good, good. I'm glad to hear it. So there we go. That's the uh, colored in little cupcake. Oh, Laurentian, that goes over here. Go in there. Go. There we go. And then all we need is the sentiment. Sentiment? Sentiment? Yeah, I guess so. Part of the day where words don't sound like words. <laughs> I know I have a tiny little piece. This actually might be cute on the green. Oh, ideas, ideas. Why do you, why do you mock me? I have a tiny little piece of that orange. It was similar to the inside of the card, but you know, I cleaned up. How good of me. It's gone, you know, as it should be. Okay, what if we stamp it on here and then mount that? Let's do that. When words just sound wrong, that, yeah, that happens to me frequently. Or you write down the word and you're like, that can't be accurate. <laughs> and it is. It just looks weird. I guess with English, there's a lot of strange words anyways. All right, let's move this card to the side. And find a sentiment. Now, this happy birthday is awfully huge. It's a beautiful happy birthday, but it's awfully huge. 
let's go with let's go with may all your birthday wishes come true I think that'll fit on here now is this piece make the piece fit where you want it I don't want to waste any of this paper. All right, so I'm just going to cut a little bit at the bottom here. Use it. And use another glue dot. It is going to be time to get new glue dots. I guess if you had like a, a light tape or if you cut your piece of paper longer than you needed it and taped over the edge that you like that you're going to cut off that would work as well all right oh yeah i could make a little there's a bunch of little stickers on stickers they do stick but only to the plastic there's a bunch of little uh designs in here that we could add so let's do that so here's the wish and there are some these little tiny stars. Come on, focus, my friend. There we go. I'm going to put some stars on there. I'm going to place them all. And then I'm going to close the lid so they're all in, this, in the spot that I want. If I can figure out what spot I want them in. The only thing that limits you is your own mind. I guess maybe your dexterity. <laughs> they're tiny. They're they're nuts and tiny. I've never used them before because they're so small that I thought I'd just probably mess up the stamping. So this is the other one. This tiny little butterfly. If you can even see them. <laughs> I feel like this set maybe is um like a shrunk down version of this particular uh, stamp set. So, all right, so we'll press that down, pick up all those things. You can see them grabbing onto the plastic. So everything's all set in place. I'm gonna use brown again. <laughs> I have nowhere to set down things. All right. Now the, the joy of trying to grab on the back of this thing happens again. And I'm gonna turn it so I can get in there. This would not be nearly as difficult if I had a proper sized ink pad <laughs> as opposed to a ridiculously large sized ink pad. All right, I think we're inked up there. Oh, huh. I made a mistake. Look at, I've inked up the back of that stamp. When I put it on this side, I didn't put it facing the right direction. <laughs> Let's stamp off that. <laughs> Hopefully that side will still want to stick. <laughs> oh yeah, that's pretty typical. Pretty typical for me. <laughs> now I have to, now I have to ink this back up again. Oh yeah, turn this way. Like I say, this would be much easier to do with good sized inks and probably the actual stamping rig that doesn't have these edges. I think it's a great idea to use this CD case for that. Like I say, I got this idea from somebody else. They didn't use a CD case, they did use a DVD case, but still I thought I could sort that kind of thing out. Let's see if it's stamped as nice. I did press a little bit hard, uh, and I've turned my butterfly around. I'll show you that and then we'll do it again. <laughs> so I pressed a little bit too hard. You can see that the inside is really nice and crisp, but this outside is a bit blurry. I mean, it still looks fine and my butterfly's upside down, but I, I'm, I'm going to do it again. We'll do it again. I think that maybe we should stamp this in black. Let's do it on orange. Let's see what happens if we do it on orange and then we can mat it on green. 
Only slightly. I agree. It was only slight. Now, if I can get this to transfer. Come on, you want to. I really want to use these again. Eh. It's not going to work. I'm going to do what I said before about taping over the end that you're going to cut off and see how that works. Now, if I had some kind of magnet system going on, that would work super great. All right, let's make sure this is going to fit on the paper. It will. You just don't want your paper shifting because then that can blur even more than if you press, press too hard. So with the CD case, you have to remember, you don't have to remember, I am going to use brown. I like that idea. Um, that the outside edge, you can press harder than the inside accidentally just because of the way that it's set up with that hinge. So you want to make sure that you don't press too hard on that outside edge. That's my tip. If you, if you attempt to do this yourself, which you totally can, because if I can do it, you can do it. I mean, even if you don't have the Tim Holtz scissors for cutting up the, uh, <laughs> I've inked up my, my cutting mat. Even if you don't have the Tim Holtz scissors for cutting the edge, you could always very gently just go over it and over it and over it and over it and over it with a craft knife until it was done. Would double-sided tape hold the paper? Yes, I would assume it would. I just don't have any that isn't like uh, permanent. So, I mean, maybe that's the, maybe that's the next thing I should try. Just make sure it touches everywhere. There we go. Oh, and I don't like how that M snapped, so I'm going to do that part again. Oh, and I stamped it down too hard. Good grief, guys. It's one of those days. It's a little bit blurry at that end, but you know what? This is a homemade card. This is how this card is going to be. And now that I put those little cute uh, things on it, I think maybe I'm going to cut them out just to uh, to make the sentiment a little bit smaller. Anyways, you get the idea of what you can do. I am cutting them off. <laughs> C'est la vie. It's not that bad. No, exactly. So anyhow, I just think I really liked how it stamped out. I had some bigger sentiments that I was testing out with it to start with. These are super tiny, so I'm not surprised that it's a bit titchy. But uh, the bigger ones that I was stamping were turning out beautifully, like stamping gorgeous, better than I could ever do without a rig. But I do think it helps that they were sort of all concentrated in the same area of the of the uh, stamping rig instead of being a long line like this one. Okay, so I made it a wonky banner and I'm going to stick that down. Rarely goes to plan. Oh, exactly. Exactly. And even when you're doing it by yourself without the camera on, it rarely goes to plan. Can't let it get me down or I will just be down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm sure I have a little scrap of that light green. I do indeed. But no, I want the brighter, the darker green underneath of it. So let's go with this little pattern piece. Woo! So what should I stick this down with? I don't have double-sided tape that narrow. I'm going to use some of this Elmer's Craft Blonde. Blonde. Craft Blonde. Oh, yes. I am not meaning to insult any blondes, but sometimes, sometimes I'm having a Craft Blonde moment. Um, craft Bond Elmer's. I'm going to use this because I can put a little dab of it. I, I had a roll of those micro dot things. Isn't that fun? How to cut the edges, how I cut the edges. I think so. It's a little bit, a little bit off kilter, just like me. Um, there we go. I used up all of my dots in that roller that I was using the last time. They're all gone, sadly. So I'll have to get another, I'll have to get a refill. Luckily that one takes refills. Come on, glue.
craft blonde. Yeah, you like that one? <laughs> yeah, it's like blonde bombshell, but it's slightly different. And I glue that down. <laughs> and then we'll, um, actually, I want to press it. I'll use that one that I didn't like so much to press it down. It takes, it doesn't take long for this glue to dry, but if I go in too quickly, it won't be dry at all. All right. I'm just going to cut out a mat. I'm going to, I didn't ink the edges of that because I thought it would be kind of a pain in the butt. And also the orange I have is quite dark compared to the orange that is on here. So I think we'll just edge the green and it'll be fine. All right. This is the part where I have to really concentrate. Oh, I cut it too short to have it exactly right. And get in there and make a point. All right, there's a point. Crafting under the effects of forest fire smoke. <laughs> Maybe hazardous to your health. or may lead to very interesting craft works. Craft works. Chamini. All right. <laughs> yes, I have lost my mind. If you were wondering, I have indeed lost my mind. Let's hit that with the, oh, I can feel that the glue is dried. Let's hit that with that bundled sage. There it is. Uh, well, it's really not that bad. I'm complaining about the smoke, but we've definitely had instances in the past where it was much worse and from much closer fires, so I'm not not really complaining. I'm just saying, oh, that got very dark. I mean, the color literally got dark, so I'm darkening up the other edges because I accidentally got really dark on that side. Oh, come on. It'll pop nicely from that pink, I am sure. All right, let's put this thing together. I think we're going to need foam dots and yeah, the movie. Oh yeah. And the double sided miracle tape, which is here. Ta-da. Great. Perfect. I'll take that off of there so that I forget where it's supposed to go. So if I'm using a lot of pieces, what I have started doing, if it, if the piece, like if it really matters to me how the placement is, I've started to take a little snapshot with my, uh, overhead camera here. And then I can always look at that snapshot and place things where they were. In this instance, I don't really mind, but it's just a, just an idea. You might want to do that yourself. Take a little snapshot or use your phone or whatever so that you can look at it and go, oh yeah, I put this one over here and that one over there. Come on. We're back to the, we're back to the peeling stuff off of tape portion of the show. Everybody's favorite part. Now it's peeled off. So I hope I put it in the right spot. I'm going off the edge a little bit because you know me, I can't be normal. <laughs> I 
Oh, actually, I, oh, whoop, 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 I like it, I like it. Maybe I'll put it on top of there. Coming off of there. Do, do, do. All right, I like it, I like it. Uh, <laughs> it's always a good sign when I like it. I don't know, I don't always like it. <laughs> Let's get some of these double-sided craft foam dealies going. Probably. Oh, they might be too wide. But now I'm going to have to use this stuff because it's quite tall. It's much taller than my other foam. So let's see if I can fit another one in there. Yeah, I think it's going to look really cute. Oh yeah, that'll fit. Now, if you were really um, concerned about what it might look like from the side, you could do that cool trick that I learned from Fab, which is, oh, if you don't peel this off, it won't work, uh, which is take a marker, like an alcohol-based marker, or like a, any kind of permanent, like a Sharpie or whatever, and color the side to match. Then if they look at the side, they won't be seeing your little, they'll see your foam dots, but they won't notice them. But I'm not worried about it. Like I say, this is going to be a card given to somebody that I know, and if they're inspecting it from the side, then they'll have to deal with what they see. <laughs> so I'm just cutting the little bits from around my circles on this particular foam thing to fill in the gaps. Oh, that one's a bit too long. Actually, I know what I'll do with it because I don't like to waste this glue stuff. And also I don't like there to be places that don't have foam behind them if they're popped up. Exactly. A friend won't mind. And if they do mind, then I will challenge them to make me a card that is up to their standards, <laughs> let's say. <laughs> no, none of my friends would mind. Certainly not. <laughs> and like I say, if they're turning the card sideways and inspecting it, then maybe I should, you know, start getting them to make my cards for me. <laughs> I'm going to go back through and find out how many minutes it took to peel the tape off the backs of all these tapes. Oh, no, wait, I'm not going to. That seems like a giant waste of time. All right. May all your birthday wishes come true. And let's get this guy popped up. So with one stamp set, one paper pack, a little bit of a tiny little bit of marker and some distress ink for just inking the sides of the page. You can make quite a nice, I think, quite a nice little card. I love paper piecing. I like to cut, as I think you probably know, I like to cut the uh, papers down into their elements and use those elements. Oh, that one, the paper came off itself. Nice. I want all of my double-sided tape to be self-removing paper, to have self-removing paper, be self-removing, I don't know. That is right, friends, I've gone crazy. Just snip some of that stuff. Whoop, fling it over there. It flinged into my tape holder. Seems an appropriate place for it. Oh, that's too long. On a nice long piece, but not too long, it will go up the tail. <laughs> this piece does not quite fit in there. Now it will. Stop sniffing the forest fire. Well, I felt pretty fine for days and days. It's been smoky for days and days, and today I'm feeling out of sorts. It's not, it's really not bad though because there's no ash, like no large pieces of ash falling out of the sky like there have been in previous years or uh, the year that I got married it was so smoky it was just you open the door and there was smoke. That's not what it's like right now which I'm grateful for. 
at least not in my area. I'm far enough away from it. But there were like large, there was like, uh, the smell of burning wood is lovely unless it's your whole province going up. I guess you guys don't really have provinces there, but, <laughs> um, we had pieces of burning or burnt pine needles falling down in our yard the year that we got married. That was six years ago because we were quite close to the forest fire that was happening that year gets worse every year here in BC. I think maybe in other parts of the world too, where we're just, the warming is causing extreme weather conditions. And here it's dryness. So it's so dry that as soon as a lightning strike or somebody throws a cigarette out the window, which is quite common and beyond ridiculous, but it was scary. We were ready to evacuate at a moment's notice, but it wasn't as scary as the one year where I visited my friend uh, in a place called Penticton. There was a huge fire uh, here in Kelowna, which is quite, I mean, 45 minutes drive from me. And then there were also two other huge fires around Penticton. So there were three major forest fires burning and that was really bad. If you went outside, which why bother? It was awful. Um, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. You couldn't see a foot in front of your face. It was disgusting and awful. And I can't imagine people with breathing problems having to live through that. The fire bombers were flying over. You could hear their engines and then you could see dim orange lights, which were the airplane lights. That was scary. Yeah, that, that was properly scary right now. I can, I can sort of see the mountain across the valley if I glance out my window here. So I know it's not too bad and not so close to me. Anyhow, not complaining. I mean, I am complaining that we're having so many forest fires, but I think that that's going to continue. The trend will continue. Anyhow, enough about scary stuff. Let's look at this pretty card. So this is from the die cuts with a view paper. And then the hot off the press stamp set. And then it says, may all your birthday wishes come true. And inside it looks like this, which is super sweet. I think maybe, you know, while we're here, let's, I'm just going to stamp the happy birthday on the inside just so I feel like the card is properly finished because I think that happy birthday is beautiful. So let's stamp it on the inside and not worry about stuff. I'll stamp it in brown, just like we've been doing for the rest of everything. I think it's really pretty. I was concerned about, you know, not having a whole bunch of embellishments. Now I'm stamping, I'm inking up this way because it's way easier than turning this stamp pad upside down, which I would do if it wasn't this giant archival ink pad. Yes, this happy birthday is just the right size for inside. Too big for the front. Ooh, and the hair in there. Pardon me. It's just my hair, but still gross. All right, I'm. what I've done is I've folded this end up and I'm leaning it against the thing that's in front of me so that I have a flat spot here instead of having this angled up because of my pop dots. So yeah, I think I'll put that right up there at the top of the card above the flowers. Now, if I hadn't made the card, also if my card fit into my rig, I would have definitely put this in there. But hopefully it will have stamped beautifully. Oh, and it did, it did. So there we go. There's the inside. Happy birthday. You can write over the flowers or right up here. So there we go. Happy birthday card. Thank you so much for watching and listening to me babble about forest fires. And thank you for watching on the videos too. And hopefully you've uh, fast forwarded through to see all the pertinent steps and avoided all of the, all of the goofy banter unless you enjoy that and if you do enjoy it i hope you did watch it all the way through thank you so much i like it too pop it into my stack of finished cards and then do something with these scraps <laughs> all right oh it looks windy that's good hopefully the wind will blow some of the smoke away <laughs> Mm, pardon me. So yes, again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you to the viewers of the video. Um, 
I plan to be back next Saturday as I go through my head. I can't look at my calendar anymore because it's not hanging on the wall and won't be till the end of the month. <laughs> but uh, I plan to be back next week, uh, barring some uh, unforeseen circumstances. You can always check me out on my Facebook page, Dawn's Craft Riot, and I'll let you know whether I'll be streaming. Uh, I, I always say whether I will be streaming or won't be streaming on the Saturday because sometimes I don't know that I won't be streaming until I wake up that day. So that's where you can find out on my Facebook page. And uh, until then, I hope you enjoy yourself crafting and enjoying your summer if you're in the uh, Western Hemisphere or enjoying your winter if you're not. And I hope to see you next week. Thank you so much for viewing. I'm going to stop my recording now. Bye-bye.